Haters are just gonna hate. It's what they do. But I can still send them a message, and I did, by slapping one of these beauties on the back of my ride. You can get yours at the same place I got mine. Link in the description. Also, new merchandise to come in the future. Thanks, and remember, don't worry about the haters. Just let the haters worry about you. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Let's roll. <sighs> Need more filler content. Hmm. Let's see. We did this. Did that. Did that. We did that. There's one more. There's one more. One more box to get. One more box to get. There's also knives from around the house, too. I got a lot of different knives around the house. There's one more box to get. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. What's going on, kings and queens? All right. So let's see. We got another another knife video. Okay. So like I say, you know, it's gonna be months since you see this till you see this stuff. It's just gonna be like, you know, what are you gonna? You probably might see this thing maybe in October. <laughs> Anyways, I got some stuff in here to go through. So hey, you know what? I'm just gonna get rolling. Let's just get going here. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So. Once again, this is just filler content. And what better way to create filler content than just have a giant parade of a knife collection go by? So <laughs> I'll save that for down the ways. All right, so let's just start off here, okay? This is a Kershaw Vapor. I used to keep that on my, in my truck as an extra knife in case I forgot my work knife. Dog wants to get let out one second. Come on, baby. There you go. All right, so Kershaw Vapor, pretty cool. Carried it off and on. I mean, even people like me forget to bring their knife to work, and sometimes I wind up carrying it. Okay, so check this out. This is the Williamson Urban Tactical. This is made by Lansky. What this was, it's called the, or the World uh, Urban Tactical. Some some dub this the the World Legal. I don't know if that is really the World Legal. I don't know if it's necessarily legal across the whole world. But the idea behind this was, was that it didn't lock back, it was under a certain amount of inches, and it fit into most categories that countries allowed for a knife. And the cool thing was is that, is that it had ta the tactical looks to it, but check this out. It had a real st stiff uh, leaf spring, and it would come out in the, in the, in the, in the uh, deployment here, had an aggressive, kind of aggressive uh, angle to the blade, a high hollow grind on the blade, and it also had a little bit of a knocker on the back. And the idea was is that is that you can carry this and I think it was, I think the idea was you can carry this in most locales without any trouble. And because some areas did just they just go aggressively after people carrying knives, I guess. And and so I I liked it and I would I actually would carry this down Southern California. And one time I was going into the uh, Disneyland promenade and they were metal detecting everybody. And uh, I was like, well, Mom, I don't want to throw the landski out. And everyone's behind me getting mad. Or, you know, and it's like, I'm going to go back to the room and drop it off. Because the other thing about this knife is it didn't cost very much. So let's say a metal detector or somebody at an airport did seize it. I'm not out a whole lot of money. And I actually carried it quite a bit because I knew that I was all in the clear and nobody could say nothing, Harley. So that's why it was all good. This is a cool one here. This is a Kershaw, and it's actually designed by Ken Onion, and it's a Steven Seagal collaboration. I lost the clip off it. Um, should have never let the bolts back off. But this is an actual uh, Stingray inlay. And, and the, the scales, the scales, the handle's aluminum. But they milled, I guess they milled it out. And they, or they, ca I don't know if it's cast or milled. But anyways, they put a Stingray skin in here, and it's a flipper. You have the option to flip, or you have the option to use a thumb stud. And there's Steven Seagal's signature on there. And there's some writing on the back. And I guess re reading the literature, it's, I guess part of the deal was was that he um, would only... The, 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 the ray skin was part of his, um, I guess, his requirements for the knife. And it does actually give a pretty nice texture to it. I've carried this at work as a usable knife. I'm surprised I didn't beat it half to death. You can see some of these points on here where it's gotten kind of dinged a little bit. But it's a good knife, and it actually has like a really nice. Looks like it looks like somebody actually custom ground that blade, and it's all polished. And 
they did a good job on it. I got I only got it for like 35 bucks on closeout. One of those knives that was on closeout, I knew there wasn't going to have any, so I pounced on it. This is actually an interesting story here. On this one, I'm going to wipe it off, though. It's nasty. Um, I was in Monterey, and I, was, and I got this knife. And it was kind of weird because, like, I was walk, I was driving over there, and we decided to go back and get the knife. My mom bought it for me, and I was thinking about going into law enforcement. And, and what I liked about this knife, it was the same knife that used the um, EMS blade. So it's the same as the paramedic knife, except it's a metal handle. It's called the Mariner. It's actually designed to be used on sailboats, so you can cut ropes. The idea was is that you didn't have a pointy blade on the end, so the idea was that you're less likely to kind of stick anybody with it. It was more of a cutter, and the uh, the uh, stainless steel, you know, kind of helped protect against the salt water. But I was I was I should be going on YouTube saying this, but. I was on, I was driving home and I said, you know, this girl I knew and, and I said that, you know, me and her aren't on really good speaking terms right now and I'm thinking, you know, mom, I'm thinking when I get back, I'm thinking about patching things up with her, you know, and saying I'm sorry and being such a jerk and, you know, and my mom said, yeah, you ought to do that. That'd be great. Cool. And so we go to the knife shop and I'm buying this thing. It was between this and it was between the Terzula uh, it wasn't an ATCF, but it was a collaboration that Tuzula had with Spyderco at the time. And Spyderco and collaborations were kind of rare then. You know, they, were, they weren't, they were kind of few and far between. It was kind of still kind of a somewhat new idea. But I wound up getting this because I wanted this for what I thought was going to be a job someday. I never got into law enforcement. But I bought it and I came out with it in the box. And there she was, the girl I mentioned. She was out front. And she was talking to my mom, and so I started talking to her. And the next thing you know, we went all the way up and down Carmel and went to all the art galleries and just went up one down the street and down the other. Spent the whole day with her. <laughs> kind of weird, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so and I was just mentioning now I should patch things up with her on the way home. I'm on the way to buy the knife, but just before heading home, but the whole just before heading home, we're just going to leave, turn into a whole day with her, the girl that I was going to patch things up with. All right, so let's see. What should I do next? Uh, this is interesting. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. This is this is actually a carry knife, and I like I was pretty hard on this one. I about beat this thing into the ground, and I didn't know really that I was probably better off taking the Torx wrench and undoing these thumb studs before I sharpened it because these kind of would get in the way when I'd sharpen sometimes. But I did. I I, I got by. I have one of these in black Teflon. I think it's coming up. But uh, this is the one. This is my beater version of it. I used this because it was a tonneau point. Had the access lock. Um, I think it might have been my second access lock. I was still kind of on the fence between that um, Aries and this one. I think I just said, well, why not buy both? I mean, like I said, I just didn't realize this was going to be a bi-weekly deal where I'm going there buying a new knife. So, and this is, like I said, this knife here, this was about probably a good number of years before I got into buying all these others here. This was like, you know, 1994, 1993, and this is like 2001 when I bought that. So, so there's a big divide between my collecting. I wasn't really collecting between getting this one and the rest of these. So, but yeah, that's the Benchmade that I got. It's Mel Pardue uh, design. So let's, here's another one. Here's an NRA knife. This is the first uh, NRA dinner Friends of the NRA, 25 years. Friends of the NRA, and uh, I, I had these on the. I had these on about two videos back. I had where you go to the NRA dinner and these be stuck in this in this uh, styrofoam turkey, and you pick it up and they'd be like a dot on the end of it, and you take that dot. And I guess you you win. You would roll for a prize. I forgot how the game went, but anyways, the sharp the edges on these things were for being inexpensive knives. The edges on these were really good, and I'd wind up cutting every every both times I bought the play about these and played the game because it was more about the game than it was the knife. I, I would actually wind up cutting my tri tip with this because it was a tri tip dinner. I would usually cut the tri tip with this. It's a cutlery at the dinner wasn't that good. This is actually when I was afraid to carry knives, and so I figured I couldn't get in any trouble really with this. I've seen the full size version, but I would buy this and just kind of carry it in my pocket. It's a, uh, but I tell you what, that little blade can do a lot of cutting. This I would not going to get stung by this thing. It's a some kind of buck. Um, 
was when Buck was making those rubberized handles. This thing is this thing is pretty pretty nasty. It's pretty it's pretty it's pretty it's a pretty bad cutter. I mean, pretty not bad. Cutter. I mean, I mean, a pretty pretty gnarly cutter. I wouldn't want to get stuck by this thing. So let's see what's next. Um, I'll go into uh, old timer. Um, I got this thing. It's not on a whim. I bought this and started carrying this thing. And the weird thing about this was, is when I bought it, I um, went back to go get a couple more. And they were all sold out. Charade had, you know, began to move operations overseas. And then the later ones came out. I don't know if there was Taiwan or somewhere. I think this is one of the last American-made sharp fingers. It's called a sharp finger. But it's a pretty good little blade. It's a nice it's a nice design. And then the next one here is a Benchmade. This is the 722, yeah, model 722 Pardue Axis. I carry this like one day. And I decided, well, since it's a first-run production, I decided I would... Um, Go ahead and keep it as a collectible. It's basically this knife with black Teflon, and it's the first time they made them in black Teflon. So I just went ahead and not decided to carry it. I carry like I carry like a day. I think I like cut a couple things. I was like, I don't want to ruin it, and I put it in the back of the box. So this is the beater, and this was like the the box one that I kept in the box. What's this? This is an Osborne Axis. Yeah, you know what? I'm not one of those people who buys gifts for people then takes them and borrows them. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. I'm really not. But I decided to get knives for my dad, and I got knives for my mom. And I got this one for my mom. I figured it would be nice and light. I could teach her how to use it. And she says, oh, no, I don't want to carry a knife because you go ahead and keep it. And so it's just been here, and I never carried it because it's technically her knife. And I just – so anyways, I wound up with a 710 Osborne. So that's how I wound up with that one, that bench made. And that was for Christmas one year. So this guy here, this is this is one I've kind of always wanted. This is an Emerson Commander. And, uh, um, I reprofiled the blade so it's so it's actually like sharpened on both sides. It's initially they're chisel ground, so it's only one side is sharpened and, the, and it comes to a point, and the other side's left untouched. I stuck it in a sharpener and reprofiled it. It's pretty sharp. It's not you know bad. You know it's, it's not paper cutting sharp, but I mean I wouldn't want to get nailed with it. This has the wave feature inside of it. I mean, on it, where you pull it out and it opens up, and it opens up when you pull it out of the pants. <laughs> Sorry. And there's like two cuts in there where there's like two bearings that kind of help assist running it. I think this is before the internal bearing systems came up, but if you can see inside there, there's actually like two pieces, and I don't know if it's if it's laser cut. They kind of pop out, and they have little little roller balls that kind of keep contact with that. So, you know, no blade plays really perceived ever on these things at least I never have this is one here I got for Christmas one year I got this from my dad it's called the black horse uh, this is a Kirsch is a Kirsch comes with a Kershaw light what the hell is that's about I don't know what that bumps from you go in there clean that out I'm going to bed I found some nasty batteries in there look at that anyways it came with a light and here's the knife itself. And this is actually a pretty cool knife. And I was actually on the search for some of Kershaw's lockbacks, but they don't really make them anymore. A lot of them say discontinued. But this is the Black Horse. It's made on a lockback style knife. It's got a fat grip to it, but it's real. It feels really good in the hand. You know, it feels really feels really good in the hand. And uh, I used to carry this off and on, um, you know, as a as a juvenile, which I wasn't supposed to do. But uh, I, I didn't know any better. But but this, this feels pretty good in the hand, and that's and it's actually still, to me, I think it's a viable knife, but it's just such an antique. You know, one thing about all the years, I mean, this knife's like 30 years old. This rubberized handle is held up really good. It just doesn't feel, because you get rubberized handles, and they feel kind of tacky, you know? This isn't, this doesn't really feel, don't feel a whole lot of that. This actually feels like I still carry it, and, you know, it feels like it's, it's holding its integrity pretty good. Let's see, I had one more, didn't I? Was that it? Oh, one more, yes. This is actually a gift one year for my mother. It was a Microtech. It was a Lightfoot Combat Compact. Um, I carry this thing to work quite a bit, and I loved every minute of it. This is actually one of my favorite knives. Uh, they made a version that was a double-action auto. Well, first of all, uh, you could tell 
you can tell some there's a, the first reiteration of Microtex from what I understand were titanium bolsters and you had a skeletonized clip and the shark was uh, uh, it's more, more of a skeletonized design with a shark in the center. This is a solid clip, the shark skin. And if I understand, these are aluminum bolsters. Uh, typically, you would see that first design that would be a carbon fiber scale with, with, a, with, a, with a metallic, and this is a more of a, of a black chin on it. Um, personally, I, I, really, I really enjoyed this knife, though. It's the second reiteration. This is the aluminum bolster version, but it's been pretty good. In the double action version, you can tell because there's a there's a I think it's on this side. There's a detent on this side, and the bolster moves back and it'll snap open. This is just a plain single action. You have to manually thumb it open. But I carry this thing. I thought I lost it one day. What it was, I got so jumbled up at work, I stuck it in the other pocket, and I wasn't used to being there. So somebody said, "I'll look for it tonight at work," and. Um, Turns out it's in my pocket the whole time. I'm so glad I didn't lose it. And after that, I, I started keeping it at home and carrying other stuff because I didn't want to lose it. So some of them other knives that got kind of filed into the collection because I just did not want to forget it and lose it. So anyways, that's the, uh, what is this, number three? Wait, one, two, three, four. This is, this is four. Yeah, number video four of the knife collection. So hey, you know, like I say, filler content, but you know, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you on the next one. And hey, don't let people hate on your retro upper-tier knife collection. Don't worry about the haters. Just let the haters worry about you. See you.